I mean, onto Killer Eye, and then he brought me over onto it. We sort of partnered up, and we did that show with Dave Dakota, and it was a four-day shoot, and we thought, my God, we're going to die. It's <laughs> like we're going to be working 18-hour days, and we're going to be like, you know, it's going to kill us because we had like a very short prep, even though Mark had already started things we had things to finish and, and and we had things to actually build for the show that weren't even started and but we went on the show and dave dakota is like the most well prepared and easiest director in the world to work with he's just the nicest guy and he's really talented and he knows how to get things done quickly and i mean literally the first day of shooting about you know halfway through the, sh- the the shooting day dave walks up to us or the first day to or whoever and says all right you guys are done for the day see you tomorrow we're like really no <laughs> kidding we actually we actually have time to go back and prep stuff for tomorrow so we you know so we love working with dave but by the end of that show dave walks up to us and says he says in a few months we're doing the next puppet master in romania and you guys are going to be there it was great. So a few months later, uh, you know, a few months go by, and we end up. Uh, actually, I think we'd already done a, a few other shows with them, but but um, uh, the shows Witch House and Retro Puppet Master were then announced, and I was to handle Witch House, mm-hmm. that was going to shoot in Los Angeles, and then Chris was going to handle Retro, which was being shot in Romania. So we combined everything. We worked out of my lab, hired a small crew. And a, I don't know, maybe a week or two into into uh, building Witch House and, and Retro, uh, Chris walks up to me and one, one day and says, "Guess what? We're shooting Witch House in Romania too, and you're going over there to do that." So I ended up going over first to shoot Witch House, while Chris stayed in LA in my lab to to finish everything up for Retro, mm-hmm. and then joined me over there, and he. Um, he showed up. I mean, a couple of days before we finished uh, Witch House, and and literally the final shot that was shot on the night that we wrapped Witch House was the first shot from Retro Puppet Master. Oh, Since wow. we we're shooting in the same location, it was just set up so that we that that would literally be the very first shot of a Retro Puppet Master shot, and. Um, and we did it. It was great. Chris directed the second unit with all of the puppet stuff. I was, kind of, I was handling all the prosthetic stuff and puppeteering and stuff. But Chris, you know, Chris was the second unit director on it. He did such a great job with it. I mean, I mean, really, without him, you know, I never could have handled it um, alone. And um, and that's, I mean, his one of his true talents is he really is a great coordinator and and uh, knows how to prepare things and. And budget and stuff like that and uh you know we did it we came back and we had going right on to totem and we were at full moon for a couple of years by that point uh, at that point afterwards yeah. um yeah so it was you know, a really great experience i mean coldest winter in romania in 50 years but i loved it i mean it was like and we, we just had the greatest time over there shooting it yeah full moon does a lot of great movies they really mm-hmm. do yeah, you know, it's it's really it's it's a, it's a fun operation. I mean, Charlie really is, you know, he's a really wonderful guy. I mean, I uh, you know, I think everybody has their their issues from time to time, but you know, I can't I can't really slam a guy who helped me achieve a lot of my goals. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, and, and I'm really 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 happy that I've had the the opportunity to work with him. As a matter of fact, I remember seeing Laser Blast maybe even end of the world in the theater and seeing his name, I said, I'm going to work for him one day. And, <laughs> and sure enough, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bes- besides uh, special effects and makeup artist work, have you done anything else in entertainment, like directing, producing, or acting, or anything? Or? Well, um, directing, I've actually... I have- well, I've done some second unit directing on a couple of shows. One was there's another show with John Bigler called To Die For or Son of Darkness To Die For Two, mm-hmm. the vamp- vampire film, and uh, another film that I'd done with Mark Rappaport, who, you know, obviously had been working with Full Moon himself on some of the Puppet Master films, and it was called The Backlot Murders, and that was a lot of fun because 
uh, we're shooting on the Universal Backlot. It's the only experience, and even though I'd already already shot on the Universal Backlot before, it was the first experience I ever had where I was part of a crew that, you know, the tram would drive up, and then they'd have to stop while we were shooting. So, you know, I'd be standing at the craft service truck drinking coffee or grabbing a bagel or something, and there'd be people taking pictures of us and stuff. <laughs> so I, I'd never had that experience before. It was really cool. yeah um but um you know and then as far as acting i I actually i actually had a a lot of roles in as a matter of fact all of us virtually all of us who were over in italy on arena had little bit parts in arena or in the show um playing aliens various aliens and eventually it culminated with me getting hired the stunt double for Armin Shimmerman, who who was playing the character I was doing makeup for, uh, Weasel, mm-hmm. and they were they wanted since Armin actually had to leave Los Angeles, I mean leave for Los Angeles uh, to resume his work on the Beauty and the Beast TV series, they were stuck without someone to shoot these final scenes with him, a fight scene and a stunt scene and. And uh, um, he and I were standing together one day, and, and our line producer, producer Walter Massey, uh, you know, sees us together and goes, "Ah, Jeff, you play Weasel." And Mike Deek is standing next to me, and he hands, he holds his hand up and starts doing the money thing, you know, like, "Hey, hey, uh, Walter," and he starts like, and, and I get like a four hundred dollar bump for going in and just doing, <laughs> you know, Scott Coulter helped me put on the Weasel makeup, and I did the kind of costume fit me perfectly, and. And and I went in and you know I did this did this scene with uh, with um, Hamilton Camp and we, we, we fought and uh, I did my I did my high fall and and uh, you know even even when the film is aired it's it's so funny because they never dubbed my voice so the, the weasel's <laughs> voice changes slightly and it's because it's because it's me <laughs> at that point <laughs> you know and I've done a little bit so Lobster Man from Mars I went in and, and uh, doubled for the for the guy who's playing the Lobster Man and and you know, things like that the Primevals also I ended up playing a lot of the hominid roles um, because again I fit the costumes. <laughs> pretty much but yeah i'm not i'm not that comfortable in front of the camera i always you know would like to think that it, you know if i if i did anything like that you know i'd be more comfortable but i always feel yeah i feel better b- behind prosthetics oh i i am a dying guy the the, the the guy who's dying at the beginning of to die for two also the one's being rushed in the hospital mm-hmm. bleeding profusely from chest wounds and that was me that's probably the only time i've done a role that really where you could see my face but but I was pretty quickly dead by that point. So, <laughs> but you know, as producing goes, um, yeah, I produced a ton of short projects and a web series. And the web series was called Camera Obscura. It's a twenty-episode web series that was created by my friend Drew Daywalt, and it happened to be Jack Klugman's final project. Oh wow! Um, and and then afterwards, the, they had made me an associate producer on the show. So, yeah. So you've no, done it, it all in entertainment. You've done <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'll tell you though, if I were to direct a film, though, if I actually were to agree to a direct, because I've turned everything else down, I'd do a spaghetti western. I wouldn't do a horror film. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, that's that. that we'll, we'll see if that ever happens. Well, there's still time. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> let's, let's, well, let's see spaghetti westerns come back, and then I'll be I'll I'll, I'll get in the saddle. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My next question to you is: Do you have any advice for people who want to get into a special effects work or makeup artist work or the careers you chose? What is your advice to? Well, well, for one thing. You- got to stick to it um, don't give up too easy because it's 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 very difficult at first to get yourself established as in most careers a lot of jobs are pretty easy to get but getting in the film industry is a little different mainly because you've got to kind of get yourself into it there's not many people that will actually you know kind of you know from time to time though somebody will come and hey you, know, you want to help me out i mean it's happened to lots of other people that i know who you know were weren't in the business they got their first taste and they've remained in the business 
um, you know, A, finish school, make sure that, you know, that you got your education, and B, um, you know, study the things that you're interested in. Uh, I mean, if you're going to be in the, the makeup end or the art end of it, basically, make sure you know, you know, the, some of the art and you know some of the techniques. And, and even when, when I was a kid, it was really difficult to get this information. And, and thank goodness I, I, was, I knew the people to call to get that advice from. Um, these days it's a little bit easier because of, because of the Internet and there's so much information out there. But when I was younger, I mean, we had Cinemagic Magazine and, you know, we had... Uh, I mean, famous monsters. We had other things that kind of were able to fill those voids um, and, and make your own things. I mean, just the most important thing is to have something to show. Um, you don't want to walk into a place without anything to show. And, you know, because if you're if you're planning on, you know, being a sculptor or a painter or, you know, even even in some of the less technical, you know, aspects of it, you got to have something to show for it also. It, it, it really helps establish you as being serious about what you're going to do. Um, and then the most important part also is to build relationships with people. And, and, and uh, you know, it's a very frustrating business, and I've seen it bring up the worst in people, myself included, um, because it's very stressful at times. But sometimes that stress also can lead to amazing creativity. Um, you'll, you'll find yourself stuck with something and then suddenly, you know, the deadline or you'll be on set trying to figure something out and all of a sudden you'll get, the, you'll get an idea and follow it through and sometimes very quickly you have to do it and you end up really coming out a hero um and and that's what people really notice um so yeah i would say definitely the first thing is to make sure though that you you, you have your education um because it's it's really really important um and then you can also go to you can go to makeup schools and then there are you know there are other classes that you can take um, if you're going to be an actor, acting classes are really important. But again, makeup school. I never went to makeup school, though I taught in makeup schools. Um, it was just too expensive for me. So I just really got the stuff and then figured it out on my own, along with help from guys like Dave Allen and Jim Danforth and those guys. And Jim even told me once, he says, the film industry is the only, only industry that... You spend all your time to get into, and once you're in, you try to spend all your time getting out. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, the entertainment business isn't for everybody. You have to enjoy it, and you have you know, to... You know, even if you do one film, you can look back on it and say, I did that. That was something I was involved in. Some people, that's good enough. Um, for me, I, uh, you know, I, I, I set a goal for myself and I stuck with it, and and I and I was able to keep it. And I'm not the biggest guy in the business, but you know, but I got a little bit of recognition thanks to doing like the Puppet Master films. Um, so it's you know, it, you just never know where it, where it's going to take you. Yeah. In fact, it took me all over the world, so I can't you know I can't complain about that. <laughs> yeah, it's very rewarding in the end. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. I was not nominated for an Emmy Award too for for when I was working on Babylon Five, and that was that was an amazing experience because yes, you get that phone call at five or six in the morning with somebody telling you congratulations, and your first your answer to that is for what? <laughs> <laughs> and sure enough, when I found that out, I ran out and bought the bought, bought a copy of the Los Angeles Times, and sure enough, there was my name in it. Um, so you know, so you just never ever know. Yeah. Well, Jeff, uh, thank you so much for letting me interview you and hearing about your story and your projects. It's been an honor talking to you. Are you kidding? It was an amazing honor speaking with you, Trey. And we'll, we'll speak again, and let, let's chat further. I'll uh, I'll be happy to try to tell you more more uh, interesting stories about my my boring life. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. You have a good day. Bye. You're welcome, Trey. Take care of yourself. Goodbye. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. 
Thank you for tuning in, and God bless you all.